Right, welcome everybody to this uh, tutorial on how to work with the Blackview dashcam software. Um, so when you open the software and you insert a SD card, then automatically all your files will be loaded here um, in this list. So you have P files, you have the red ones which are event files, you have the and files which are the normal ones so normal is when you are just driving um, event is when an event is happening so for example you get into a car crash or um, you hit a pothole for example and when a normal file has just begun recording that will be interrupted and it creates a standard one minute event file uh, which starts about five seconds before the actual event and then you have the P for parking and for parking mode that means that if the car is stationary for about five minutes then automatically the GPS is being um, turned off and the car goes into parking mode now in parking mode you have a setting we'll come to that later on where the car doesn't record everything so it keeps filming but it records only when there's something worth recording and that is based on motion detection or of course on impact so here in the interface we can see that we can filter on those files so for example i only have the parking files now so i turn those off right now i have nothing these are only the event files and these are the normal files each file has a timestamp and a date associated with it. The type, the N, P, or E, and sometimes with a certain setting, we'll come to that later as well. You can also have manual files. And then you have the front or the rear camera. Also, you can only filter on the rear ones or only the front ones as well. So let's turn everything on again. And to play a file, so let me just take uh, one of the last files here. So to play a file, you double click and then you get it on screen here. And uh, once you get it on screen, you also get the corresponding file from the other camera right here. So let me just pause it here. Um, assume that you filmed something that hit your windscreen and this is in the way. No problem. You can use this button down here and just move it to the four corners or skip it altogether. Right. If you click the rear file, then of course the corresponding front camera will uh, display. Right. You can also make it full screen like this, so you can uh, see it better it to uh, terminate the full screen. If you want to rotate the camera, um, the image, you can do it here. Um, these are the play control files right? and here below you can see the date where it's at. You can choose to play it at a louder volume if you record the volume of course or you can choose to play it at four times the speed like so but usually I'll keep it to one times the speed. If you have a GPS signal you can see it here that it has the signal it uh, displays the speed and it also displays the coordinates with the map button right here you can actually see where the car is at during the film so let me just play it here so backing up again and when I start returning on my drive then you see that you basically get a live view or a corresponding view of your GPS position position on the map. You can also have this on a larger scale right here with the my way viewer. Then let me zoom in a little bit here. Then you have the start and the finish of your trip and a pin where the event has happened. In this case, I hit the brakes hard. So that triggered an event. Again, you see the speed, you see the coordinates, which is uh, perfect for uh, getting the exact location. 
All right. Um, on this screen, we also have the format button for the micro SD card. I would advise not doing it via this application, but just do it directly on the dash cam. So you can uh, hit the Wi-Fi button on the right side, it's a small round button. You can hit that for about five seconds until you hear a beep and then it formats the SD card. The reason why I personally do it in the dash cam is that if you do it on the computer, then you manually have to um, make sure that the firmware is on the SD card, otherwise um, the dash cam will complain about that. You can take a snapshot of the screen and of course you can do a little print screen of the application. Now when you have your dash cam connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot, that can be a mobile hotspot or um, your home network for example, then you can switch to the cloud viewer and that cloud viewer gives you a map of where the car currently is. Um, so currently it's parked in my driveway. If the icon is blue that means that your um, dash cam is connected. You can click on the dash cam and you can for example choose black view. Now it's going to load all the files on my black view micro SD card. And again, I can only choose to have the event files here. And for example, I will um, double click this file. You can drag this down to make it a little bit better. And then it's going to read that file from the dash cam. Right. I can also uh, select that file copy to cloud so you get if you register your camera you get a free cloud account for about five gigabytes of storage or you can copy it to local disks of course I can change to the rear cameras only or the front cameras and filter those as well I can go to my cloud account I don't have anything stored on my cloud account I can search on my local disk where it's in downloads Blackview Cloud for default but you can choose any folder um, or you can just double click and now we are getting a live image from the camera so with the free version of the cloud account you get about 10 minutes of live view every single day and sometimes Blackview has uh, is sponsoring these events uh, and then they send out notices that you can do a live view of your dash cam for the entire day or two days or an entire week even it has been All right. um, same here so when uh, the car is moving you can see live where the car is actually going of course you can switch here to the rear view camera and if you have a microphone on your computer then you can turn on the voice communication and you can talk to the person inside the car and they can respond if the voice recording is on and uh, you can just uh, talk to each other and say hey honey can you pass by the shop and get us some more milk or something instead of having to use the phone um, don't know if it's very useful but it's kind of cool that you can actually do that if you want to use this, make sure that you are connected to a network. Moving on to the preferences. So we go to preferences and these are the preferences for the DR650S 2 channel. I will go over the preferences for the 750S in just a second. So you set the time zone, you set the resolutions of Full HD for the front camera, HD for the rear camera. So that's the maximum resolution that this camera can take. Image quality is the highest. The brightness, I'm seeing it's a little bit dark uh, for the moment, so I can change it to be a little bit brighter. Of course I want normal recording while I'm driving. I have no interest in my voice recording. It only records the voice inside of the cabin. So if you want that, you can turn it on 
or there's an option on another screen where you can manually turn it on or off the date and time display so that date and time display is what you see here and then the speed unit in kilometers an hour miles an hour or you don't want to see it at all video segment you can do one two or three minutes um, I usually keep it to one minute because one minute file at full HD 30 frames a second that is about 50 to 55 uh, megabytes per clip so it's already quite a bit and you can just paste the movies uh, or the clips one after another to get a longer video uh, auto switch to parking mode so that's what I mentioned before so you turn it on and then uh, when the car is stationary for about five minutes it automatically goes to parking mode GPS is turned off and if nothing happens for the entire night for example your car is just inside of the garage then you will have like a couple of clips to clear the buffer once in a while but um, you don't get the full night's recording which leaves you with more space to have actual driving footage rear camera power on of course if you have rear camera you want to have it on and recording and the rotation is for when you accidentally uh, turn the camera upside down or when it's more convenient for the cable to come from the other direction and you have to mount the camera upside down then you can do it via software to turn it to just flip the image sensitivity that's an interesting one so you have the sensitivity in normal mode so while driving it's less sensitive than in parking mode of course because in parking mode with a, a small scrape you already want to have it recorded of course but given the fact that these are sliders it's a little bit uh, difficult to get the proper value so what I've done and, and I really like this setting is if you go to advanced settings and you take a clip so let me take this clip again and you see there's here we go so this has triggered the event in my case so that's the acceleration but let's assume I want to say okay the braking here that should have been an event as well then you can just take that yellow line and make sure that you drag it until the line is outside of the yellow border and then you see your corresponding value so on the DR650S uh, those values are between uh, 0 and 100 on the new one is between 0 and 10 on the DR750S so right now if this were to happen not this part for example but if this were to happen then um, you actually get the uh, event triggered and then it creates an event file right, so I really like this feature so if you want to tweak your settings a little bit uh, usually the, nor the standard settings are quite good but if you want to tweak them a little bit then you can do that of course and it's easiest by using an example here okay the motion detection itself so that's for when you are in parking mode when does it start recording how sensitive does it need to be the sensitive means that you are less likely to capture something while in parking mode more sensitive that means that if a leaf is flying in front of your camera it will also record that going on to the next screen so right here we have the Wi-Fi settings so uh, I use the company name for my Wi-Fi and then the password um, so that is for connecting the your smartphone to the dash cam so this is the SSID or the network name that the dash cam will emit right. then you have a couple of other settings like do you want the recording status LED on or off the security LED has a little small flashing LED uh, at the front uh, while driving I don't want that on while being parked I turn it on so it's clear that there is a camera filming at that point same thing for uh, the rear camera only there it's not flashing it's just continuously on voice guidance 
I would suggest turning that off completely because otherwise if you start driving it says parking mode disabled or entering parking mode or uh, if you want to do a voice recording for example uh, then it says voice recording so that is still or a manual recording which is the proximity sensor right here so you just wave your hand to the left side of the dash cam about one centimeter from the side you can choose whether you want to turn voice recording on or off or manual recording on or off regardless of the settings that you have here so everything is turned off here it will still mention that that setting is being activated the volume that's when the dash cam makes those statements um, or there's even a setting if you have the dash cam continuously on that via the app you can communicate with each other through the dash cam so that's that's a cool feature um, next here we have the user text overlay so that's a watermark you can add um, if you have a single dash cam I don't think it's very useful personally I think it's most useful for when you have multiple cars with dash cams for example you can enter the license plate here and then you know that this footage was from that specific car last but not least the cloud settings so um, I'm connecting to a hotspot here I just call it Roadrunner because the license plate of my car is Roadrunner and then um, you have a password you can connect up to three hotspots so for example this is a home network office network and a Wi-Fi hotspot for example and it will connect to them in order once you are connected you can push some notifications so when manual recording is activated then you can uh, get a notification like you get from messenger or Facebook just a little ping on your uh, smartphone and then you get notified hey manual recording has been activated or motion detection in parking mode has been activated now while this may seem an interesting feature because um, you would know when people start sniffing around around your car just keep in mind that if you are parked alongside a busy street you would constantly get those notifications because people are constantly passing by event recording in parking mode of course we want to know when somebody hits our car event recording in normal mode uh, I don't want to be notified that on my cell phone because I'm the only driver of my car overspeed so if you want to have a notification of that for example when your kids are driving you can do that um, and or maybe your wife or your husband of course um, and parking mode activation deactivation so if you turn that on you would come to the house um, stop the car you enter the house and then five minutes later it says hey I've entered parking mode um, maybe not uh, that big of a deal but it's also for deactivation so when somebody leaves with the car so for example you are thinking that your kids are at home and some uh, your kid is just taking the keys wants to take the car for a drive you didn't allow that you get a notification hey somebody's taking the car or somebody's stealing the car so that's uh, yeah so that could be interesting as well right so these are the settings for the DR650S 2 channel now let's move on to the DR750S 2 channel all right so these are the settings for the DR750S 2 channel which you can see here at the top so first the basic settings are a little bit different you can set the time based on your GPS position and then for example I am currently at plus one um, and you can set it to daylight savings time yes or no or you can do a manual time setting and then it takes the time from the computer the video settings so with the new camera you have full HD at 60 frames a second and full HD at 30 frames a second in the back so that's the front that's the back um, which is a much higher quality that you already have uh, the image quality is set to the highest there 
and you can turn night vision on. Uh, with night vision on, you get a much better vision at night, of course, that's why the name is night vision. Um, but you get a little bit more grain in the image. Um, but compared to the DR650S, it's a lot better. Now, brightness has been changed. As this is a feature that I requested for quite some time. Um, the brightness in the front and the brightness in the rear can be changed. Um, this can be helpful, for example, when the standard setting is great for the front, but my back windows are tinted. So uh, I can make it a little bit brighter on the rear. For the recording settings, most of them are the same. right? Um, rear camera rotation, uh, the power and the recording has been uh, removed. Because I think yeah, people always have it on on. So the rear camera rotation, that's still here. And then we have a new one, which is lock event files. So with a 128 gigabyte SD card, you get about two days worth of footage at the highest quality. And that's not a lot. So for example, if you park your car at the airport for a week and on the second day, somebody hits your car, you get an event, but that event will be overwritten by the time that you get back. So you don't have the uh, footage to prove it anymore. And 128 gigabytes is the maximum SD card size that the camera can take. So right now they have a new feature which is called lock event files. That means that event files are not going to be overwritten. So the camera starts overwriting the normal and the parking files, but the event files are being saved. So that footage from day two with the accident, that would still be there when you come back a week later. Of course, if you have multiple events, then your disk will be full at the end uh, and you don't have much room left to uh, record normal footage. Then you have two options. Either you uh, delete the files manually or you say overwrite locked event files when full. So when the disk starts to get full, then the camera will start overwriting those event files. The sensitivity is exactly the same here. Uh, only you see until uh, it's between one and 10 instead of between zero and 100. For system, so the same LED settings are here. Uh, a new setting is do you want Wi-Fi on in parking mode? Um, if you want to connect to your uh, home network, then you need to leave this on. On the DR650S, it was recommended by Blackview that once every two to three weeks, you would reformat your SD card for stability. And like once every month, you would uh, turn off the power and reboot the camera. Uh, in the new one, they have a scheduled reboot uh, right here, which you can set to a certain time when you know that the car is parked. It takes about one or two minutes to reboot but it greatly increases the stability of the camera. Same proximity sensor settings, speed limits, uh, if you want to have a beep when you exceed a certain threshold, the same watermark you can add, the same voice guidance and the volume for the camera when something is being set. For the Wi-Fi settings, same here. So this one is from uh, a camera that I installed earlier. So by default, you get this name and a serial number. Cloud settings are also still the same, so nothing has changed there. It's mostly the basic settings and uh, some system settings for the reboot that have changed. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, if you have any more questions or you want some other stuff explained, feel free to comment below. And uh, I hope you enjoy your dash cam.